What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're gonna dive into one of the most fascinating case studies um, unfolding right now in the business world, and that is Zoom stock. Amidst all of this turmoil and crisis, while every single financial asset and market is crashing, uh, one of them, or actually, uh, there's been a couple, but one of them really um, has been, been, you know, embracing this trend and has just been at the right place at the right time, and that is Zoom communications. Um, you've probably already done 10 Zoom work calls from home today, so you probably know exactly the product I'm talking about, but today, I want to dive into the company because this stock is soaring. It's up about 30% since this crisis hit. Um, as I'm recording this episode today, the stock's at 131, up another 10 or 11% despite a flat market. Um, Zoom stock is literally one of the only companies in the world that is increasing in value. And it's not just increasing a little bit, it's increasing massively. The market cap now almost $40 billion for a company projected to do less than a billion dollars in revenue this coming year. Um, you know, it's just exploded in value. So in this episode, I want to dive into why Zoom stock soaring. Um, of course, it's pretty obvious that this work from home trend is going to be a huge boom to their business. But you know, what will the actual impact of their financials be? Will they be able to justify the valuation um, of their new equity price, which is pricing in a massive amount of growth? Is that fair? Does that work? What is the future of this company? Um, I, I'm so so excited to dive in this episode. I'm rocking my Zoom shirt today. Shout out to Noah um, and my other Santa Clara friends who used to work at Zoom. Crazy enough, and that's kind of why I wanted to start this story because Zoom is uh, the founded 11 years or nine years ago. This scrappy little Silicon Valley startup. Uh, founded by a guy called Eric Yuan, who is a really, and I remember my friends telling me like, Eric Yuan is like this, he's such a dope CEO, like he's so awesome, so fun to work with. He's got a huge, huge vision for this product. We're gonna be like the biggest digital communications company in the world, we're gonna crush everybody. At the time I was like, Skype already exists, like what's the big deal with this? But anyway, then they started telling me more and more about Eric Yuan. So he originally, um, uh, I think he's from China and originally had this like kept trying to work remotely from China, communicate with people back and forth as he moved to the US, had this huge pain point of like being essentially being able to, you know, be feel like you're in person, but it being digital, virtual, you know, everything we know is video chat, video conferencing, video calling, really making that product seamless so it just works and really being able to change the paradigm of how people communicate. I mean, it's a huge, huge idea that I think we all have taken for granted until now. And so he actually started a company in 1997 called WebEx, which a bunch of you probably know, that does a very similar thing, video chat, video communications, mostly for enterprise clients. Well, he sold that in 2007 to Cisco, made a ton of money. He stayed at Cisco to 2011, then ended up leaving Cisco, which to me, it, it seems clear that Cisco's bureaucracy just tied down the vision of what WebEx wanted it to be, which is really what Zoom is today. And so Eric Yuan was like, okay, this is dope. I made a ton of money, but this did not actually fulfill the mission that I set out to achieve. I'm going to start a company that's going to be independent all the way until we hit our goal. That's actually going to do this. And that was Zoom. So founded in 2011, you got this little scrappy startup, Zoom Communications. I think their Zoom's biggest advantage is they started in 2011. They started to code these video conferencing things from the ground up as opposed to their competition, which is adapting these legacy code bases. I think subtly the timing of, of launching Zoom was a key advantage from structural coding or engineering perspective. That's just a guess. But the point is they found Zoom. And just to dive in on the investor relations page, they have this, this like sort of goal and mantra of the company, which I think is so powerful. Um, our goal is to make Zoom meetings better than in-person meetings. We provide a video first communications platform that delivers happiness and fundamentally changes how people interact. We connect people through frictionless video voice chat and content sharing and enable face-to-face -face video experiences for thousands of people in a single meeting across disparate devices and locations. Our cloud native platform, da da da. You get it. The point is this last sentence, um, or the last, these last two sentences, we strive to live up to the trust our customers place in us by delivering a communication solution that just works. The goal is to make Zoom meetings better than in-person meetings. And so to accomplish that, of course, they have all of these different products, um, basically all amounting to the same thing that allow you to video chat or, you know, audio chat meetings, rooms, phone, webinars, uh, Zoom for developers. They even have apps, which I'm going to get to in a second. Um, but so you have Zoom. And I think that what, what, what I just want to spend one second on here is that this is a huge, huge problem we are tackling in society that as we expand, spread out, work, you know, more remotely, the internet continues to be more per per pervasive, the need for a really good that just works video conferencing solution to feel like we're in the same place at the same time is rising exponentially and is not going away anytime soon. And this is going to be a staple of humanity for decades and decades to come. So that is the problem that Zoom's tackling, a huge problem that I see persisting for decades. And I think on that lens, you can see why people are getting so, so excited about the company and product. Just to show you their website, to give you a little more flavor, 
flavor of who they work with here. Um, this is uh, their customers, and I think this is just cool because so like so they built this product, they had this vision, and now it has really become exploded and become a global phenomena. You know, every single com or tons of companies around the world, thousands of companies using them: Uber, Viva, uh, 21st Century Fox, Delta, InBev, Autodesk. I mean, all these huge names we've heard of: Box, Medallia, Groupon, uh, HubSpot, TransferWise. You know, you get the point. A bunch of institutions, governments, University of Washington, uh, Columbia Business School, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, you get the point. The point is Zoom's product has gained ridiculous traction since it's launching nine years ago. And the reason is, is because it just works. This Steve jo uh, Jobs mantra, it's a better product. I don't know. I feel like this is sort of my personal experience, um, but I just feel like compared to Skype or Google Hangouts or anything like that, Zoom's actual quality of making the video call work seamlessly across different devices and quality of streams has been, is second to none and that it just works thing is why it's taken off it's super easy to install on your phone you can get a link send it to anybody in two seconds have them join this it just works philosophy making the product frictionless has really been the secret sauce to zoom success and what you would have thought was an otherwise commoditized business so now let's just dive into their uh, ir deck from their latest earnings release which is march 4th to go under the hood and get a look at their financial um, situation here so uh, Zoom, 88% growth in the year, 14% margin, 114 million in cash flow. So they are profitable um, and, and making money and producing cash flow. 86% growth in customers with $100,000 in total tw trailing 12 months revenue. I guess this is a key metric for them, these big enterprise customers that are really what drives um, you know huge growth in their business. Um, Zoom phone anniversary, this is a new product they've launched. 2.9 thousand customers with 10 employees. Um, scrolling down here, they have this chart about the most popular video conferencing apps showing Zoom's growth of 876%. Um, on number of customers. I think this leaves out Google Hangouts, which I think is really interesting because I would actually, and Skype, to be honest, but I think those, um, I don't know, I think those are two more like platforms that are the biggest competitors, but this is Biz Okta's Business at Work 2020 report, and it shows Zoom, this is sort of what I was telling you about, better product, gaining share, and what you would have thought was an otherwise commoditized industry. This to just give you a quick look at their financials. I mean, the growth speaking, you know, backing up the whole story. This is what I love when I analyze companies. It's like, we're super disruptive. We're changing the world. We have a game changing product. Our customers love us. We're getting more and more customers by the day. And now it's like, okay, well, let's see the financials. Is that true? You should be growing every quarter with crazy growth rates, constantly expanding, constantly hitting records if that's the case. And it is the case. Zoom consistently hitting new re record revenue growth, 188 million in Q4, 78% uh, percent year over year growth. This is a huge reason why it's justifying such a premium from a price to sales basis, um, rapidly growing customer base and gaining enterprise traction, um, 81.9 thousand customers with more than 10 employees. One thing I think that's going to change in Zoom's story over time, getting a little bit sidetracked here, but is that they're going to focus on the consumer business more and more. I think Zoom, that is where they really explode in popularity here is everyone's like, oh, with companies with under 10 employees, I think freelancers, people wanting to talk to their friends and families, like just get togethers because people are bored that they want to do on Zoom. I'm even reading about like Zoom happy hours, virtual happy hours. Like I think the amount of use cases for Zoom software because of this work from home trend are exploding and their investment narrative of we're going to be that enterprise business focused solution because that's how we make a ton of money is great, but that's 81,000 customers. We're talking about 81 million potential customers just using your video conferencing software, not on the enterprise side. I think that is an explosive new co like consumer facing more side of Zoom. That is where the story is going to evolve in the coming months. Just to quickly go through, they show the international breakdown of their business here. We're seeing Americas um, at about 70% uh, of their business still growing bas basically where they're expanding, but you know, more than doubling in rest of world, um, almost doubling in Asia and Pacific. So strong growth, not really an international company company yet, but getting there and planting those seeds. Here they have total contract under revenue. As you can see, huge, huge backlog growing, um, $604 million, growing up 94% year over year. So huge backlog, subscription business, predictable recurring revenue for Zoom. And I think that's another reason why the market loves this business so much. Cash flow growing as well, up 130% year over year, 37 million, you know, maybe 150 million uh, run rate of annualized cash flow, 160 million. Not huge, but the point is they are, despite this crazy level of growth, Zoom is already at that inflection point where they're starting to pump out a lot of cash flow and be super profitable. Another great sign of the business, free cash flow um, up huge as well. Then the last slide of this year, guidance, um, revenue for Q1, 199 to 201 million. Just want to put out, this is the important number we're going to be analyzing in a second, 905 million to 915 million. They have 301 million weighted shares outstanding. Love how they give the share count. Almost no companies do that. That's super awesome. Thank you, Zoom. Uh, positive non-GAAP operating income of 110 to 120 million. So,
Let's go to hypercharts and crunch these numbers and see what that actually means. So Zoom did 623 million, 622.66 million in revenue in fiscal 19 or fiscal 20. So now let's do see what they're going to do in fiscal 2021. 915. Let's just use the max of guidance. 47% growth. So this is one thing about Zoom's business that I think is sort of the, you know, I don't know. It seems like they're growing, they're crushing it, they're killing it, but their growth is growing from like 100% to just 47%. So if we go here back to hypercharts on a quarterly basis, scroll down to that revenue growth chart, um, you can see their quarterly revenue growth going down when they IPO'd, it was over 100%, 120%, 107%, and last quarter, 78%, much slower. And they're saying for the full year, they're gonna average about 46% growth. Um, so I think that's kind of slowing growth. And then now let's talk about the valuation of this, just from a price sales basis. Although yes, from a operating income basis, the company is going profitable as well, but we're gonna ignore the profitability for now and just assume that Zoom is all about growth, growing their top line. We're gonna value them on price to sales for now. So Zoom, looking at a market capitalization of 36.4 billion. But remember, that's not really counting into this new stock comp dilution. So they actually gave us that number, 301 million, if you remember, um, right here, 301 million. So we can go 301 million times 131.84. So we're looking at about $40 billion market cap at these current prices for Zoom. So this is a company that's, remember, doing $915 million in revenue this year at the high end of their guidance. 40 divided by 0 0.915, 43.7 times sales. So this to me is the entire question of Zoom. Zoom is projected to do 950 million in sales. You're paying 43.7 for 46% growth rate. That to me is absolutely absurd because I think you need to have a higher, you need to either be keeping a 46% growth rate for five years um, and grow revenue to you know three, four, five billion pretty quickly, or this is just way overpaying um, for the business. But then the flip side is that 915 million number that I'm quoting was issued as guidance on March 4th, you know, two weeks ago at this point, the entire world has changed. It's looking like people are going to work from home for months and months. Zoom is basically going viral in popularity. So we could actually see Zoom, you know, what if they up their revenue guidance to 1.2 billion? They say, no, we're going to go like 70% this year, 80%. So I think that is sort of this change in, in uh, future cash flow and trajectory of Zoom's business that the market is grappling with right now. And does that make sense? Is it worth it? So in summary, we have Zoom stock, 131, 132 a share, $40 billion company exploding in value because of this work from home trend. But yet they're going to do less than a billion in revenue this year, maybe a little over a billion if they get a huge bump from... Does this make sense at this valuation? For me, I personally think this is way too rich. Back in the days when I come from, like 10, 15 times sales for a company growing that, that was 40, 50% growth was fair. That was a rich valuation. Pricing in the fact that it was recurring. Pricing in the fact that it's profitable. Pricing in the fact that it's going to grow for years to come. You know, let's give it a 10 or 15 times sales multiple. So when I see a 43, 44 times sales multiple, I'm like, this is absurd. The stock could get cut in half tomorrow and it still would not be cheap. But the flip side of that is, is this a structural change? Like I said, this idea that us being able to work like we're sitting in the same room when we're not is, I think, a $100 billion plus product in the long term for humanity, and it's just going to keep getting more and more valuable over time, and we're really seeing that in the midst of this crisis. It's, I think this whole work from home thing, and everyone's talking about what's the new normal going to be, um, I think a huge part of the new normal is people realizing that you can work remote, that it's in many ways more efficient to work remote, that the technology to work remote, thanks to Zoom, has improved dramatically, um, and it's just a lot easier. So I think this is a material uh, needle needle moving bump in the potential for Zoom's business, and that is you know justifiably a reason why the market is so excited. Is it enough of a needle mover to really like make me want to buy Zoom at these prices? No, but I don't think it's as crazy as people th think. I think Zoom is going to have a massive rewrite to their guidance upward. They're going to do way over a billion in revenue this year. Next year, they could even, even be doing 2 billion, 2 billion plus at super high margins, continuing to grow. They just launched this quirky little product with changing a bunch of backgrounds. I think as the usage of Zoom goes up exponentially, the amount of ways they could monetize beyond premium subscription plans and really geared towards enterprises, um, you know, I think they could really diversify the revenue stream, like different backgrounds, different add-ins. I don't know. I'm I think there's a million different things that Zoom could do um, just to, to monetize this traction and attention they're getting. And I think that's another layer to look into this thesis is if we're talking about tens of millions of monthly active users, you know, that is turning into like this social network thing that's extremely valuable with a ton of attention that should be worth 40, 50 billion dollars. So 
Um, I think there's so many different lenses and, and things to look at this from. My most interesting uh, sort of next step in analyzing Zoom, I don't have any position in it, is going to be to see what happens on their Q1 earnings call, see actually the numbers that now we've, you know, this whole work from home thing is unfolding. Are they changing their guidance? What does their profits look like? Um, you know, what what is the true financial impact of this? Um, and how does that change what's actually going on at the company? I think that is what's going to be looked for next because for, for now, it's total guesswork. Like we have really no idea what's going on other than it seems like Zoom is going viral, catching a lot of steam and gaining major traction. So anyway, that's my deep dive onto what I think is one of the most interesting stocks going on right now. I mean, they I, actually, one thing I didn't mention, uh, they have a uh, rock solid balance sheet, like 800 or 900 million in cash. Um, they're Like I said, they're actually making money. So really in a fi- healthy financial position as well. I think that's adding to the premium um, of the company. You have Eric Yuan. He's only like 50. I think he's got another decade ahead. He's an owner, operator, founder, visionary leader of the company. That justifies a premium as well. Um, so, so many different layers to this Zoom story. I really want to know what you think in the comments below. Um, are you know is it, do you think it's overvalued, undervalued? Are you taking a position in Zoom, or are you just staying at home like everybody else and just chilling on Zoom meetings? Anyway, this is Hyperchange. Hope you're all doing great um, amid this sort of crisis. Um, wishing you all the best. Huge shout out to our Patreon supporters, producers, fun in the channel. See y'all next time. Peace.